Okay, so let's talk about walk-in coolers for a minute. So the temperature in a walk-in cooler, walk-in box, however you want to say it, some people call it cold rooms over in, in Europe. Listen, 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of what we want in a walk-in box, depending on the product, depending on the situation, the application, so on and so forth. We're above freezing, so the product in the box, if it's designed well, if it's not close to the evaporator outlet or something like that, shouldn't be in peril of freezing. But the coil can freeze. The reason the coil can freeze is because with a walk-in box, we're probably running somewhere in the 25 saturated suction temperature range. So 25 degrees Fahrenheit is below 32. So we can freeze any moisture that's in that space. So a cooler, which is way different than a freezer, doesn't need to have hot gas defrost, doesn't need to have electric defrost, doesn't need to have any of that. All we gotta do is shut the refrigeration unit down. We keep the fans running on the evaporator, but when the unit shuts down, the air in the space, because it's above freezing temp, that air is enough to defrost the coil. It's called off-cycle defrost. Now, there are some applications, if you're in a very humid climate, you put timers on these things, defrost timers, shut the machine down for a certain amount of time, dependent on, on the application, where you are, how many people are going in and out of the box. All of that matters. The activity in and out of the box matters because the door opens and closes every time it does. We get some infiltration of air and moisture into that box. So in humid climates, a lot of times you're gonna see timers that just shut the refrigeration side down and allow the coil to defrost just with the fans moving the air that's above freezing across them. So where I am in the Toronto area, we're humid maybe three months of the year where we have some real heavy humidity. Now, most of the coolers I work on, or I'll probably go on a limb and say, none of the coolers I work on have defrost clocks on them because we're not humid very, very often. And the units are cycling off that ice is defrosting within the time that they're actually down because that air is above freezing, moving across the coil. It's defrosting any sort of buildup of frost from that off cycle defrost without the use of timers, just using the thermostat to shut the thing down when it's at set point. Now, that being said, I have come across coils that have frozen where there was nothing wrong with the actual machine. It's just that the activity in and out of the box was frequent. It was a high humid situation outdoors and every time that door opened and closed, moisture would move in. The temperature would rise in the box. It would create a longer runtime on the machine, longer runtime, more humidity, more moisture sticks, more it freezes, the more it builds, more of a chance it's gonna ice now, over. There's ways to mitigate that, and I've done these myself, and I've seen a massive difference. I'll let you know what those are. All right, so on my whiteboard here, we have some things that we can go over. These are ways now. to mitigate freezing of an evaporator coil on a walk-in cooler. Rule number one for me, is keep your evaporator away from the door. This is your evaporator hanging from the ceiling. This is your door. Now, if your evap was up here, as soon as the door opened, we would have some infiltration, moisture, air getting sucked right through the evaporator. So keep your evap away from the door. Rule number two, keep your sensor on the return air side. If your sensor is over here, it's gonna be measuring or the colder air coming off the evap and it's gonna cause your system to run funny, short cycle, so on and so forth. Keep your sensor on the true return air of the evaporator. This is super important, guys, door curtains. I've drawn them like this just because I'm not an artist. Door curtains, guys. As soon as that door opens, without the curtains, all of that air and moisture is gonna infiltrate. With door curtains there, it's only gonna infiltrate past the openings that a person walked through or a fork truck drove through or a pump truck or something like that. The rest of the door will be covered by the curtains. So you're reducing the amount of moisture and warm air that can actually get inside. All right, now I've seen doors open and if the door curtains are heavy enough, they can hang there and maintain the temperature within the box because the door curtains are not allowing any of that cold or, or warm air to infiltrate. Okay, and the other thing that we can do is maximize our temperature range on our thermostat. What do I mean by that? To maximize the range of the thermostat, we first need to know the range of the product that's in that cooler. So every product can be stored at a range. So let's say the range of the product storage is 34 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything below or above that, we're in jeopardy of damaging the product. So to maximize the thermostat range, we wanna go as low as possible on the thermostat setting. So let's say we're 34 is our product range. Maybe we wanna bring that to 35 
all right? And then we have some, some leeway before we hit 34 so we don't drop below that. And then what we wanna do is set the differential on that to as high as we possibly can. All right, so we, we don't wanna go over 40, so maybe we wanna turn the machine on before it gets to 40, maybe 38 or 39. These are things that you're gonna to have to play with and experiment with, but maximizing that range, what we'll accomplish by doing that is having the longer runtime of the equipment, and then when the equipment shuts down, the longer runtime of the off cycle, allowing a lot of that moisture to start to melt. Along with maximizing the thermostat range, making sure your EVAP is furthest from the door. I know there's gonna be applications where the install is there already and you can't do anything about it and the customer's not gonna allow you to move it. But your thermostat range and door curtains is going to really, really and help. We also have to encourage the employees of the facility, if they're holding one box or it's just one person, to go through the smaller doors in the walk-in box if, if they have them. I've seen too many times where there's a big roll-up door, it's one single person with a clipboard going in to take some notes, and they open that big, huge roll-up door. They let all that heat and moisture in. That is such a waste of energy, and it's gonna cause the unit to run harder, run longer, and potentially cause ice issues. Now, we've talked about some ways to mitigate ice on a cooler evaporator coil. Timers for one, door curtains, proper installation of the sensor and the evaporator, and maximizing the range of your thermostat will all help with this, okay? So, guys, I hope this helped you guys. I hope you learned something. Like, subscribe, hit the bell to the channel, guys. There's gonna be more coming at the HVACing.